I invite the congregation to please stand and face the processional cross at the back of the sanctuary. First, uh, a word of thanks to uh, our music accompanists, uh, Laura and Andre, for that beautiful and meditative um, prelude. Welcome everyone to worship on this, the third Sunday in the season of Lent. A special welcome to um, all those who are with us, who are new to us. Uh, um, we sense that you will, we hope that you'll sense God's spirit flowing among us as we worship today. Now just a word about our worship this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to uh, Barbara Allen. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I was looking at the camera. Uh, Barbara Allen is recording our service this morning uh, for those who cannot make it uh, to worship. So later this week it will go out um, for those who could not be with us this morning. Um, also, in terms of precautions to help retard the spread of the coronavirus, uh, please keep in mind that recommendation for the six feet of social distancing. Now, who had ever heard of social distancing before, <laughs> what, Wednesday? <laughs> um, so please keep that in mind throughout the whole service. Um, also, towards the uh, recommendation of social distancing, the offering plates will not be passed this morning. You are invited to place your offering in the basket uh, at the front of the aisle uh, when you come up for communion. And uh, speaking of communion, we will do it continuously. Um, what that means is you will be invited to come up the center aisle where there will be the plate of bread. You are invited to carefully take a piece of that bread, move to your right, and select a uh, cup, small cup, of either wine or grape juice. And then you can put the empty cup in the basket at the end of the altar rail. Um, and then finally, as we have been doing throughout the season of Lent, the passing of the peace will be towards the end of the service. And again, I invite you to think about what it means to pass the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, to your neighbor. Um, and as we do that, I invite you to probably just bow to them um, to try to maintain that distance, uh, but still sharing and acknowledging um, the, the uh, peace of God. And of course, uh, as we move on, things may change. Um, so uh, we keep all of ourselves and the congregation and our neighbors in our prayers. Now, our service begins with confession and forgiveness printed in the bulletin. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness. And so we confess. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and bright spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you, and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to us in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All our sin is forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for us. Amen. Now let us sing our opening song, Come to the Feast.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on a rock and harrow. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? We will read Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God, and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the patterns of the earth, the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts, as in our God, as on that day at Massa in the desert. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years I loathed that generation, saying, The heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we, have, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel.
fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to her, him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You will worship what you do not know. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will pro proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more than the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed of his word because of his word. They said to the woman, 
It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Uh, just a few words before I move on to the, uh, to the sermon. As we all know, this is a very difficult time for our community, our nation, and communities and nations throughout the world. We are all very worried for our loved ones, ourselves, and our neighbors. We are overwhelmed, or at least I'm overwhelmed, every time I go to the news for an update. The effects of this pandemic are so far-reaching, affecting all of us on so many different levels. From serious health concerns and worries, to lost income because of the nature of our jobs, to scrambling to figure out how to care for our children who are home because of school closures, to fears of what will happen in even a few days, in a few weeks, to many more. It's a worrisome time. And so I exhort and encourage all of us to keep each other and our members, friends, and neighbors in our prayers. I invite you during the, the time of prayer to share names of people for whom you are concerned, either out loud or silently. Also, as we leave here following the service, please make a special effort to reach out to our members, friends, and neighbors. Give them a call and find out how they are doing. Or if you're struggling, Please reach out to others among us and myself for help. Finally, the Apostle Paul encourages the Christians in Philippi by saying, I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. I know what it is. I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things, Paul says, and I would add, get through all things, through God who strengthens us. So in this anxious time, we look to God who strengthens us, and will get us through, as God strengthened Paul and got Paul through the many challenges that he faced in his life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us the vision to see you when you come into our lives. Help us to be patient with your elusive presence. Preserve us from trying to figure you out on our terms. Help us to be hospitable and to receive you on your terms. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's long gospel reading is the story about Jesus and an outsider. The Samaritan woman. She's an outsider on at least a couple counts. She's a Samaritan, which faithful Jews regarded as heretics and outsiders. And she's also a woman, thus on the margins of a, in a patriarchal society. She couldn't take an active part in the religious life of Israel. She is an outsider. 
Now, if you were here last Sunday, you'll remember that during the Gospel reading, we heard the story of another encounter of Jesus. This time, last Sunday, it was with an insider. Does anyone remember who? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Nicodemus was very much an insider, a teacher, a ruler of the Jews. So here we are, two Sundays in a row, and we've got two very different encounters, memorable stories of Jesus encountering another person. One, an insider, Nicodemus, and the other, an outsider. We don't even know her name, the Samaritan woman. Nicodemus comes to Jesus, seeking him out by night. Jesus initiates this encounter with the woman. Jesus strikes up a conversation while he's out, while she's out drawing water in the middle of the day. Jesus approaches her and engages her in this lively and interesting conversation. Jesus speaks deep truths to her, telling her of the availability of this living water. Jesus gets personal, delving into the secrets of her life. Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus ends a bit inconclusively. Nicodemus has little to say to Jesus except, how can this be? Nicodemus ends the conversation confused. The woman, however, engages Jesus in this lively give and take. The encounter ends with her running to tell her friends, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. He can't be the Messiah, can he? Now if you're an insider, you've probably been in church a good bit. You probably know, and you probably know from these two encounters, how things usually go with Jesus. Usually Jesus has better luck with the outsiders than with the insiders. They go to him. The insiders go to Jesus trying to figure him out on their terms. But Jesus goes to the outsiders. Jesus seeks them out and engages them. In fact, it's probably not an exaggeration to say that the Gospels are skewed toward the outsiders. Jesus got into all kinds of trouble for spending so much time with outsiders, with the uninformed and uncommitted like in this conversation with the Samaritan woman. This man receives sinners, was the charge against Jesus in the other Gospels. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, Jesus replied. In most congregations, there are at least a couple types of people in conversation with Jesus, insiders and outsiders. The insiders, and I would include myself in that category, we know a great deal about religion, or at least we think we do, and we're often depicted in the Gospels as those who are confused by Jesus, yet think we know a lot about faith. The outsiders presume, like this woman at the well, that they don't know much about religion. And maybe that's the best attitude for knowing and learning. 
outsiders are sometimes made to feel inadequate by us insiders. And if you think about it, it's, it's rather strange since, as I mentioned, the gospel seemed to show Jesus seeks out the outsiders. This morning, whether you find yourself an insider or an outsider, sometimes I feel more like one and other times like another, and maybe you do as well. But however you feel, know this. Jesus has found you. Jesus seeks all of us out. Jesus engages us. And Jesus begins the conversation. Jesus gives us what we need. To the insiders, Jesus gives us a challenge. Jesus prods us and pushes us so that we are encouraged into new understandings, into new experiences of the faith. To the outsiders, Jesus gives welcome conversation, encouragement, and embrace. So where do you find yourself this morning? Would you call yourself an insider or an outsider? Well, know this, that today's gospel is a reminder that wherever you are, Jesus has found you. Jesus calls you. So enjoy the conversation. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. First 
responders as they care for the sick among us. Give wisdom to public health officials at all levels of government who are striving to manage this pandemic.
So send us to love Christ in our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gracious God, you took the form of a servant, offering yourself as food, comfort, and strength to a sick and hurting world. Anoint with the servant heart those who take your word and sacrament to our sisters and brothers in their homes. Grant grace, mercy, healing, and hope to those who feast on your body and blood and receive your words of new life. Amen. Amen. acceptable acceptable time now is the day of salvation holy god speaking spoken and inspiring bless you unbind you and send you in love and peace amen, amen. go in peace let your light shine thanks, thanks be to god, god.